sure you can see some of the plate as well. As he appears in his own work, Devlin is always both a brazen self-publicist and a reluctant, doubting, apologetic artist. And his works are at once sober pieces that adopt the protocols of the documentary or the home video and shaggy dog stories that occasionally lapse into a kind of existential farce. Devlin is a postmodern naïve, always working to recapture the lost dignity of the art object, but never but quite knowing where to look up, for it. Like his canvas is his own vocation, and he turns it into a tragic comic narrative with an uncertain okay. ending. There's something about the creative act, the endeavour of making work, work we call art, that is predicated on the possibility of failure. It is the possibility of failure and ensuing vulnerability that are the key components in Devlin's practice. In these films, he sets up a series of challenges to tackle the paradoxical moment that defines a decision. He draws a direct attention to the thin cusp between either or possibility, and we could identify it as a split second of stasis. For a work to be worthwhile, whether it's conceptual or actual, to be worth doing, there's the risk that it may not work out as planned. The plan itself proves unfeasible, or other unpredictable elements thwart an expected outcome. Maybe when Daniel Devlin was planning his reenactment of Bastian Adder's fall at the Serpentine, as when we see him riding his bike along the path, beside the lake pass and passes by, he does the unexpected and continues his ride by steering the bike straight into the lake. For a split second of decision making, he did not know what would happen. At the moment of confrontation, or rather just before it, is there a way out and for how long is the option available to turn back and say it doesn't work, I can't do this, I can't follow this act through, and to accept instead the disappointment of failure. The instinctive reaction of avoidance is subverted by an act that is both comical and ridiculous. There is a more complex participation in the possibility of failure in this work, the recreation of Adder's Fall in Amsterdam, and in the conversation of art and its objects. There is a deliberate recognition of the age-old paradox between an ideal and its expression. At each moment of a possible high point, or the exhilaration of heightened sensibility, at that moment the inevitability of failure kicks in. Here the comic but salutary dousing, either immersion, falling in, or simply having bucket of water chucked in your face. The passers-by at the Serpentine may not even have remarked on the event other than to recount it as humorous. A man rides his bicycle in the lake, splash, in the busy bustle of everyday metropolitan life, where the individual struggles to assert radical autonomy, Auden's poem about Icarus's fall identifies stark vulnerability of an event that begins with hope and ends in despair. Auden's account takes us to the core of the moment of simultaneity. When there are both possible and impossible events taking place, a boy flies in the sky, the terrestrial being becomes aerial. He says that though the bystanders may have heard the splash and the forsaken cry, for them it was not an important failure. There is a lightness of touch in Devlin's work. We encounter it in the use of conversation, for instance in Drajan, when Devlin and a friend sit at a cafe drinking coffee and discussing the nature of coffee and the performance of its making. His friend speaks of a coffee maker whose reputation draws people to seek him out to taste the magical combination of flavours and to experience its philosophy, by implication becoming something of a quest. He speaks with a persuasive authority, lightly subverted when we discover he himself has never tried it, only heard about it and been drawn by the allure. In Window Tate, we see the artist sitting in a room with a window behind him. Our view through the window is of the slope down into the Tate Modern, with the Frida Kahlo banners hanging above the entrance. And again, the gentle play on artistic projection sets us following Devlin, whose figure we see through the window approaching the entrance. We watch while the action takes place behind his seated figure. He remains sitting, and behind him he walks purposefully down the ramp to the entrance, as if recessed in his own mind. The thought seen simultaneously with the action. 
Then, as with a blink, the name on the banner changes for a second or less to Daniel Devlin before returning to Carlo as he himself turns to walk back up the ramp, back to and through the window.